and we won't have too many more rides if we actually get more snow. Note, it's a Tuesday, so... I think it might snow on Sunday, but that's so far out, who knows? I will say this phone mount does pretty good right up here. I didn't lose it the last time I tested this, and I don't have the video out because, because, um, yeah, I'm that backlog for my Montrose trip. So, I think I'm done with those videos. So, now I'll start to put out some uh, videos of, you know, me talking and just riding jacks and stuff. And probably my channel is probably one of the few where if you stay up to date and you're local, you know, meaning you watch my videos, even if you just quickly scan through it to see snow conditions because I usually bring you know, a lot of the video because I like showing the trail I like showing the trail it does a few things and I've talked about that before too it documents the trail people say hey the wear is so bad well as long as there's YouTube you'll be able to go through and you'll be able to uh, say no you know, five years ago, it looked like this. Ten years ago, it looked like this. You know, as time passes, and uh, no, you know, nothing really changed. So when you get an environmental group that is like, oh, you know, erosion and this and that, people can go back and be like, no, it's, yeah, it's a little worse in this area, but overall, for however length of time went by, yeah, it's not that bad. So that's why I also like including long videos of my local trail systems especially. And then if I haven't ridden there, like, you know, my Crested Butte videos and that, you know, I just haven't been there and it, I'm hoping that the long video, and yeah, it might be somewhat boring, but it shows you the condition if you were a big adventure bike rider. You know, it might be important to you. Like, oh, you know, that's not that bad. Or, oh, yeah, that looks pretty bad, you know. You, you kind of have a way to gauge if it's worth your time going to that area for your skill level. Because only you are going to know your skill level. I don't know your skill level. So when you ask, can I do this? Sure. You know, people, people have taken large bikes on lots of trails. I'm sure there's somebody that has taken a large bike on this trail, possibly. I don't know how they get past that pinch area. That's the only, especially without help, try to lean over a big bike and walk it through. Downhill it would be easier. Uh, definitely not a BMW GS 1200 because <laughs> the engines stick out. You know, those are so wide. I mean, like this, that they would fit on if you could get up to here, but... There's a lot of areas where it's just narrow. I see the other motorcycle track from time to time that looks somewhat fresh, so. I'm thinking Pipeline and Mount Rose is per, probably pretty slick. I might go this weekend down to Penrose and uh, go to Penrose Commons OHV area. And check that out and a few other spots down there that we don't talk about. And just check it out. It should all be fine. Well, I haven't been there for a season because that's kind of the winter area. And yeah, I might go there this coming weekend. If I can get out on Saturday, I forget which day the wife said we had something going on. I think we kind of have like a family, possibly a family Santa portrait session, but uh, 
I mean, it's not because Bass Pro isn't doing the whole Santa thing, I guess, this year due to the woo flu, but there's a, a professional doing it. It's like $100. But you get like, you know, it's like 30 minutes, and obviously they're going to take good pictures and do whatever they do to get you good pictures. And I'm sure sell us a package. We've done one of these things before. I think this is with an individual and not with like a necess necessarily company. We did some company once and the weight was awful. My daughter was a baby and we had a coupon for X package. They take these, we finally get in, they finally take the pictures. I mean, like an, an hour, two hours went by, I don't know, something ridiculous. We were like getting really ticked off. We finally get in, and there, there was that many people there. We didn't know that. We thought you had a time and it was scheduled and all this, and it was like, I guess the time was just like show up by, but it didn't mean you were getting in. So very poor planning on whatever studio that was. And then, you come out spending like $600 because everything is an option. Oh, you want this, you want that. And you sat that long, you feel pretty obligated. Well, you don't feel obligated, but you feel like, well, I should get something. I mean, you're not gonna just walk out. You just wasted three hours, you know? So, you know, we spent the money and there was no, nothing about honoring the price they talked about and I think I left them a bad review online and then we bought the digital prints but it was like they didn't tell us it was in their format to look with with their viewer photo viewer so it's like worthless like oh, I can't send anyone a photo so pretty much I'm back to what I was going to do scan in the print high resolution with a scanner i'm sure most people have scanners nowadays and uh send that to my parents you know my parents can print at home on a photo printer the photo and it looks good you know put it in a picture frame all their pictures and it looks awesome like no one no one knows and then they have a digital so that they can print whenever they want <laughs> so, you know, I do that with my daughter's school ones. We buy the bare minimum. And then uh, I just scan in the, the largest one we get. And I send that to my parents. And I'll scan in that like 1200 DPI, 100 megabytes. You know, I don't compress it or anything as a JPEG. And I put on my Google Drive and I send it to the relatives like, hey, you want the photo? Here it is. Then you can download it from here. Then that way they can print it. Yeah, I'm actually surprised photography studios are still around. So then after that bad experience, we found JC Penney's was good you know whatever it costs like 60 80 bucks maybe it's last with you I don't know I forget the cost so don't quote me you know we dress up and go get a family photo or Bass Pro does the Santa one and sometimes turns out okay sometimes eh, nothing nothing special no, but it's reasonably priced and if it doesn't look good you can be like ah eh, never mind and I think they can just give you one anyways I really wish this bike had a flywheel heavier flywheel but because it has the e-start flywheel kit they made made for these it won't fit because I was gonna get like some large one that because people were like yeah and that's the best if you're doing rock gardens like I like to do it will really like pop the front up which this bike has it's good at high speeds it, it doesn't do so well with a uh, low speed and popping the front up so I'm still thinking about getting a two-stroke. I just don't know what. I was kind of looking at the 
Yamaha 250X. But no electric start, no real size stator. So yeah, it's a cheap bike, but then you have to, uh, you know, I would want to buy the E-Star kit, fit like 1500 bucks from Pan Panther, Panthera, something like that, out of Canada. Uh, Highland Cycle, Morgan Highland Cycle has videos on the kit. You can check it out. And I just, I just don't, no, I mean, it still makes it cheaper than like a KTM, but you know, I can buy a Beta, Um, I can buy a Beta 300X trainer, and really for the stuff I like to do, because it's an X trainer, it's a cross between Trials and Enduro, a lot of people buy the bike and then get disappointed that it doesn't do high speeds. I don't know, do you see me typically doing real high speeds? Yeah, sometimes. I'll get out here and I'll rip it, but not, that's not my typical. I like kind of just cruising. I like the rockier areas. And then that's where that bike is just like really shined, really rocks. And I have a smart carb on this bike. I'm pretty sure I could swap over the smart carb to the uh, X trainer. You know, I'd probably leave the fuel injection for a little bit, but just to pick up the uh, fuel mileage and stuff. You know, I don't mind mixing the fuel. I mean, I've done it for so long. Plus, I believe bigger tanks are sold now for the X trainer. I do believe so. You know, that would be one way. And, you know, plating it is, I believe, really easy. And, you know, it has a headlight, it, so it has a good stator and what have you. You know, or do I just get a normal Beta 300 or a KTM 300? So many options. If it wasn't for my daughter wanting to really ride a motorcycle with me, I'd go out right now and see, you know, what dealers have. And I think they, they have more stock in now. I don't think things are, well, plus being winter, hot to trot to sell, so they'd probably be willing to, you know, make a deal, especially with places that I know. 